Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the city of Brockton's Memorial Day ceremony. While we've been extremely fortunate not to have lost any Brocktonians in service to our country in the past year, we pause to remember service members and their families who have been impacted by war. Today in Lawrence, they're remembering Marine Corps Sergeant Joanny Rosario Picardo, who was a member of a brigade's female engagement team responsible for screening civilians while respecting cultural sensitivities. She was 25. In Lemonster, they're remembering Captain Ross A. Reynolds, who died during a NATO exercise when his Osprey crashed. He was 27. Here in Brockton, we're pausing to appreciate how a split second can change our lives forever. We pause to remember soldiers, Marines, sailors, and airmen who have fallen in the past. We pause to remember living service members carrying the physical and emotional trauma of war. We pause to remember the families who survived the sacrifices of their loved ones. And we pause to remember Brockton veterans Louis Tarantino and Matt Flaherty. I'd like to introduce Anna Anise. Please stand for the national anthem. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brockton Police Chaplain Pastor Beals will be giving an invocation. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious God in heaven, we are thankful once again for the opportunity that we have to live our lives in freedom. We thank you, God, for those that have given of themselves. We thank you, Father, for the families that have lost loved ones and yet remain faithful to the cause of freedom. We praise you, God, for the sacrifice that so many have made over so many different years. And we think, Father, of all of those that have gone before us in that respect, providing the way for us to be able to enjoy what we have in our country today. And we ask that we would never forget the sacrifice that they have made and we pray, Father, that we would always remember to care for one another, to hold on to the freedoms that we have, to thank you for providing for us what we do enjoy. And I ask that you would also direct our thoughts, Lord, to the great sacrifice that you have made for us in providing eternal salvation through your Son and our Lord. Father, I ask that you would be honored by our remembrance this day of those that have gone before us. We pray, Father, that we would be 
testimonies of those that mean business for you and of those that mean business for freedom. Help us to uphold the privileges that we have this day. We ask your blessing on our great country and on our great city, and we ask it all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please welcome Mayor Robert Sullivan as he reads the proclamation from Governor Baker. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome you to City Hall. Today, we honor heroes uh, that had valor and sacrifice. We would not be able to assemble today outside City Hall without really the sacrifices uh, of the men and women that have proudly served through wars and conflicts here in the United States of America. I do want to especially um, thank Kelly Young, who is our new Veteran Services Director. Let's give her a round of applause, please. <laughs> when it was brought to my attention that we would be honoring Army veteran and prisoner of war of the Nazis, Lou Tarantino, and Marine firefighter Matt Flaherty, I said, absolutely. And we will hear from their respective families, two Brocktonians, two heroes in their own right. I do want to take a moment at this time to uh, to recognize some elected officials that have joined us here today on a beautiful day. We have Senator Mike Brady, Rep sure. Representative Jerry Cassidy is here, Representative Michelle Dubois is here. From the school committee, we have Joy Zazak here, Judy Sullivan is here, Tim Sullivan is here. From the city council, we have city council president Jack Lally is here. Councilor Lodge Wynn Farwell is here. Councilor Lodge David Texera. Councilor Lodge Moises Rodriguez. Councilor Lodge Rita Mendez. City Councilor Shirley Azak. City Councilor Susan Castro. City Councilor Jeff Thompson. Former City Councilor, former Police Chief Paul Stadinsky has joined us today. Former City Council Dean of the Council, Dennis Ianarius, joined us here today. Brockton Fire Chief Brian Nardelli. Acting Brockton Police Chief Brenda Perez. We have to thank all the boys and girls students, the proud Brockton boxers here from Brockton High School. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank the VFW Post and Commander of 1046. We, we started this morning over at Melrose Cemetery. Uh, we went to Legion Parkway, we went to uh, Korean and Vietnam uh, Memorial in Brockton, and then we concluded at Potosi Club. But thank you, Commander, and, and all of the veterans of foreign war members. At this time, as, as Kelly had indicated, Governor Charlie Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito uh, provided a proclamation Unfortunately, because there's 351 municipalities in the Commonwealth, they were not able to join us in person, but they are here proudly in spirit, and they asked me to read the proclamation, and I will do so. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. Whereas while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country, renamed Memorial Day. The last Monday in May is when people remember and honor the memory of all of the men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. Whereas throughout our country history, country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and our way of life. And whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, as governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do here pro proclaim May 30th, 2022 to be Memorial Day. And the governor proudly urges all citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in all observance, given, as the exec given at the executive chamber in Boston at the State House, the first day of May in the year 
2022 in the independence of the United States of America, the 245th, by His Excellency Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, and William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth. God save the Commonwealth of the Mass Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I proudly give this to Kelly uh, to be displayed at the War Memorial. And before I conclude, I do want to thank all the men and women that serve every day here in the city of Brockton. A lot of our firefighters and police officers and city employees and school employees have proudly served our nation. And uh, I just want to take a moment to, uh, to thank all those that are serving actively. And of course, today is a day to remember those that paid the ultimate sacrifice. God bless the city of Brockton. God bless the Commonwealth. And God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Tony O'Brien to speak on behalf of Louis Tarantino's family about his military service. Hey everybody, please, yeah, please sit down. Um, it's, a, uh, it's an honor to be, not only is it an honor to be here as always, um, but I, I must tell you, um, we all know where we are. And, and I, I, when I first walked up here, um, I was talking to, to somebody in my group and just said, this is Brockton. Look at this. It's tremendous. It's a, a lot to be proud of. A lot to be proud of. And, and yes, as the mayor pointed out, especially you kids, um, you're, 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 really, you're really making the day today. And I can't tell you on behalf of our veterans uh, how much we really, really appreciate it. Um, and I know, I, know, I know a whole lot of you are familiar with service. And that's appreciated. Um, the program says, remember and honor. I'm, I'm going to put on my uh, binoculars here, Madam DSO. There we go. Looking good. <sighs> Not really. Thanks to our vets, uh, especially. Um, I, I'd like to include our uniform brothers and sisters in the, in the police department and the fire department for all they do, as well as the first responders who have been so much a fabric uh, it, it, with, with this whole uh, COVID problem that's happened recently. Um, there's been a lot of ceremonies and stuff today they referred to earlier. We greatly appreciate all the work that was done there. Um, and uh, the city officials, uh, again, especially the VSO's office, uh, great job. Uh, thank you for all of your work here. Memorial Day is difficult, but it's a duty. For many vets and their families and supporters, every day is Memorial Day. Since the Revolutionary War, three million Americans have been killed in action. Rest in peace, heroes. The World War II battle cry of never forget is carried on. We appreciate, thank you for your service. We appreciate, especially our gold, stand, our gold star families who have lost loved ones while serving. Um, Thank you for your sacrifice. You, you just, there's no words. And our supporters, for all of us in uniform, both here and overseas, and those folks on duty right now in harm's way, um, not, 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 just, not just over there, but here in the city. Um, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bet you that some of these folks that are, that are in these great looking uniforms uh, are, are going to a shift right after this. <laughs> Jeepers. Um, you who support us, uh, we thank you for your support. You are patriots. You can do that. <laughs> not for me, not for me, for the patriots. Um, combat veterans, POWs, firefighters, police, those who go in harm's way. <clears throat> this duty is life-threatening. It's life and death. Some folks have nightmares. Some folks have survivor guilt. Louis did. By, by the way, I, I, I I'm, I'm remiss. Uh, Louis' family's here. Um, we greatly appreciate you being here, guys. Thank you so much. And 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 thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Oops. Turn into a blubbering mess. Thank you. Um, thank you for giving me the honor to do this. Uh, I, I, I'll just take a couple more minutes. 
Um, but there's there's anxiety, there's depression. You lost you lost uh, partners. Um, no one likes to talk about it, but it's important that we all know that. Part of the message is compassion. P.O.W. Louis was captured at the Battle of the Bulge, and he was like a second father to me. And my first father's pretty good, so if you're on that list, uh, lucky me. Uh, his stories were awesome. As a combat vet, he saved lives. As a POW, he lost 70 pounds from 160 to 90 in four months. And in doing so, saved lives. I, 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 trust me, I, I don't want to go on too long. I could go on a long time, believe me. I'm not going to. If you want to meet at the coffee shop, let's do it after. For stories. <laughs> right. um, so, but he also suffered the horrors of being a war prisoner. You ready for this? Yet, years later, he became friends with some of the guards in Europe that were, that were the captors and, and, and security for them. And they stayed friends until their deaths. Boom, I mic drop, yeah. Um, he was also dedicated to community service, just like uh, Matt Flaherty. I was raised in Brockton, where we believe in guardian angels, like Matt and Lou. Matt and Lou were servant leaders who made a difference. There's a famous quote out there. It's been it, it twisted around and everything. It goes something like this. Many people through their lives wonder if they made a difference. But people who serve others, they don't have that concern. And that's Matt and Lou. I love, by the way, Mr. Mayor, I love that. Marine firefighter. That's cool. Um, Lou had a great attitude. And I know, yeah, whatever. You're good. No. How many, so a lot of people don't have a good attitude. It's, it's important. It, it's a choice. And it's also part of the message. Lou would greet me. I'd, I'd see him a couple times a week. He would greet me. You ready? He would greet me and say, hi, handsome. He gets 40 years older than me. <laughs> He'd say, hi, handsome. And by the way, in his 90, he's had very good vision. Okay, I got too many freckles for anybody to call handsome, and I told Lou that. You know what he did? He leaned in and said, I love you, kid. <laughs> Come on. What else is the message? You got people that love you? You love them? Please, 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 tell them. Tell them. For me, Lou stood for lift others up. Lift others up. That, that's, that's my strongest message with regards to Lou. And by the way, for his entire 99-year life, 99 years, if you're wondering why and how he got to 99, I mean, th this, is, this, this is how. This is how. And, and by the way, he was healthy. He, he was healthy, strong, super guy. Okay, in closing, I want to add one quick thing. And, and I do it on, on, a, on a knee of respect, especially to our brothers and sisters here in uniform on both sides of the, uh, the thing up here. There's, uh, so we, we can't thank, I can't think of two American servant leaders who loved people, family, service, and the need for some to go in harm's way, more than Matt and Lou. Tyranny is overseas, and it's here at home. I'm a deputy sheriff with the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department. There's a conversation going on right now in America. There's a question. There's a little confusion. What people in uniform and a badge will do at the sound of guns especially in our schools. We don't know all the facts about what happened. You know where. 
but our families right here and wherever the cameras are. I don't know where you are. Very sorry. <laughs> Hello, sorry. You need to know and make no, st no mistake about this. We go in now, period. It's what we do. It's what we will do. It's what, it's okay, you can do that. Do it for these folks. Do it for these folks. Matt did. Lou did. Every uniform here, I know it, would and will. And our guardian angels, Matt and Lou, will have their strong hands and huge, huge hearts on our backs when we go in. Our heroes left an awesome legacy for us to carry on and lift up others. Let's admire that. Let's aspire to that every day. As George Cataldo would sing at this ceremony. We're proud to be Americans where at least we know we're free. And we gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Because there ain't no love. There, there ain't no, I love this land. God bless the USA. God bless you and your family, Semper Fi. I knew I should have gone before, Tony. <laughs> You're not going to get that from me. I had the pleasure of speaking with Matthew Clarity's sister, and she told me that every Memorial Day weekend, since they were five years old, their family spent the weekend uh, at Ellis Haven Campground in Carver. And if you know anything about camp people or lake people, it's kind of like a clicky group, right? They go down every year, same campsite, same family, friend gathering, um, and they're vacation neighbors, but it extends way past that, right? Uh, and Matt seems to be central to many groups that stand together and support each other. He was always someone you could count on to be there, not just be there, but be there with a joke and a laugh and a great attitude. He was a son, a brother, an uncle, a cousin. He had many loved ones. He was probably some of those family uh, names for people who weren't blood, but they became his family because that's just how he was. In the Brockton Fire Department, he was a brother to hundreds. He served on the Honor Guard and as a member of the International Association of Firefighters, Local 144. In the United States Marine Corps, Matt was a decorated two-time veteran of Operation Iraqi Freedom, having served in both Iraq and Afghanistan. He was also the world to Sergeant Chica, the canine he handled while in the Marine Corps and who he adopted after her service. Matt's sister told me that Sergeant Chica exponentially accelerated her brother's healing when they were united after redeployment. They had an unbreakable bond and did everything together from watching movies in bed to swimming at the beach. She said that caring for Sergeant Chica brought Matt out of his own funk that he became strong to take care of her, and that's how he was to the people in his life as well. He was strong when you needed him to be. People gravitated to Matt, and in every circle he was a part of, he brought them together. The best way to memorial, memorialize Matt is to continue his legacy. Be a beacon of positivity, be a beacon of strength, be kind to each other. That's what Matt would have done. Mr. Mayor, will you join me for the laying of the wreath?
Thank you so much for coming out today. Have a beautiful rest of your day. We're very lucky it's not raining again like last year. Um, this concludes our ceremony. Uh, please enjoy Amazing Grace by the Brockton Firefighters Pipes and Drums on your way back to your cars. Thank you.